the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. We'd like to welcome you to our current event and weekly Bible study for February 19th, 2012. And today we're going to be doing more of a dedicated study. Uh, and it's entitled, it's a really long title, uh, Exposed. Tim LaHaye, Chuck Missler, Jerry Falwell, Sung, Young, Sung Mung Moon, Rick Santorum, Newt Gingrich, Benny Hinn, Catherine Kuhlman, Paul Crouch, Chuck Smith, Hal Lindsey, Rick Joyner, The Pope, TBN, or Trinity Broadcasting, Calvary Chapel, CNP, or Council for National Policy, and the Knights of Malta, and many, many more. And this is a study that I'm using kind of as a template of a, of a Christian man named William Saunders, who's put out a lot of things lately, a lot of really good articles regarding um, Chuck Missler, a lot of confirmatory information, a lot of them are forwarded via email. And uh, I think this was originally like 60-some pages. And uh, I, I had to shorten it a little bit just for time's sake. And um, I actually added stuff in, though, as well regarding specific subjects. But there's a lot of, uh, as usual, and he does a really good job of commingling the King James Scriptures with the actual subject that we're talking about. Very, very good job. And really amazing job at researching. Uh, one of the best I've ever seen. And his uh, blog is Ephesians 5.11 blog. And uh, if you do a keyword search there, Ephesians 5.11 blog, and you should find it. But we're going to be talking about a myriad of different subjects today. And... Uh, it's just one of those studies where we're going to cover probably more bases with this study than any other study I've ever done, ever. The actual PDF is 46 pages long. I have no clue if I can get through this in four hours. I don't, I don't know. And the reason I say four hours, I have about four hours and 17 minutes of recording time uh, in any given study that I do. It's just the way that, that my voice recorder is set up. And... Uh, We'll see if we'll see if it's possible. I don't know. There's a lot of pictures in this, and if you are listening, you would, if at all possible, you would really want to try to follow along, because there's a lot of pictures that are proving exactly what we're talking about, backing up, proving um, screenshots of things that are online, of uh, like let's say a, a, a quote, or or let's say we say this particular person said this. Well, he's actually captured screenshots online of them off their own website saying this. Or maybe they appeared on TBN at a certain date. He's got the screenshot of that, where that happened online, and you can actually see the website address. So, in other words, this is very, very well documented and validated. This is an opinion, what we're talking about here. These are things that have been uh, validated, proven, and, and there's there's tons and tons of proof of that. And I've got all of the pictures saved in this. I've reduced the size of some of the pictures to try to take some of the sheer size of the PDF, kind of reduce that a little bit. So, But you should be able to read everything on the PDF that I will post. It, it'll, it'll be about 46 pages. So, <clears throat> um, he has this starting off by uh, quoting part of Romans 16, 18 where it says, by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. And this is in regard to um, essentially false teachers. By good words and fair speeches they deceive the hearts of the simple. And that's more the norm now than it is the exception. By far more the norm in, in uh, modern day corporate 501c3 uh, Christianity, particularly the televangelism uh, circuit. So, he's got a picture here of um, Chuck Missler, Tim LaHaye, Sun, Sun Mung Moon, the, of the Moonies fame. That guy, we're going to talk a lot about him. Jerry Falwell, and a guy named Ergen Kaner. And he has a caption, All of these men above are related with each other through the Ecumenical Council for uh, National Policy, or the CNNP. Now, I talked a lot about the CNP on the dedicated study I did on Chuck Missler. 
And we're going to talk a lot more about that today, the CNP, and, and uh, the dangers of that organization. Th- this teaching is just mind-blowing. The information, <laughs> I just was shaking my head to realize the level of infiltration in the, in the uh, Christian community. Okay, so let's just read that last sentence again. Uh, all these men above are, re- are related to each other through the Ecumenical Council for National Policy, or the CNP, uh, that mind earthly things among other things. All these men are the result of an apostate church not submitting to the word of God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We shall see with scripture and evidence how these claimers were not marked, quote, marked, by, gu- by the gullible apostate church, and as a result were allowed places of prominence under the banner of Jesus Christ in America. And again, that's kind of why like this ministry exists partially, is to mark them which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned in the Bible, and to avoid them, and to have no fellowship with them, uh, we're supposed to do that. We are supposed to 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 do these things, um, and because it's not been done in the church, is one of the main reasons that the modern day five hundred one c three corporate church in America is in the shape that it's in because this doesn't get done. That you'll see, they basically stop at judge not lest ye be judged. Okay, and when Jesus said that, he was totally in reference to hypocritical judgment, where you ha- if you have a beam in your own eye, you're not supposed to judge the speck in your brother's. That's hypocritical judgment. That's when you don't judge, lest you be judged. But Jesus Christ even said, he that is spiritual judgeth all things. And, you know, judge righteous judgment. So, and if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. So, judging is very, very important. It's just hypocritical judgment is what we want to stay away from. And, and that's, you know, that's also easier said than done as well. Uh, but this is what we're in reference to here. We're, we're, this isn't about having some axe to grind and, and, and trying to, like, say, wow, I'm so smart and, and, and I'm so much better and this and that. It's not about that. This is. I wish I didn't have to do this stuff. Uh, or, or, or this feeling of, okay, because... I can point out all their flaws. I'm superior. No, no, no. That's not what this is about at all. This particular study or any of the other studies. I've said this before. If I got what I deserve, I'd get death in hell. Okay? I'd be the first to admit that. I mean, oh, what a wretch of a man that I am. Who should deliver me from the body of this death? Like Paul said in Romans. I can really relate to that. So, this isn't about that at all. But these are some egregious satanic, luciferic, evil things we're going to be talking about that strike at the very core of biblical Christianity. These aren't trivial issues. These aren't just things that you can say, well, we'll just pass it by and no big deal. Not that way at all. These are major, major heresies, blasphemies, doctrinal issues and a lot of these issues even cross over into literally a, a, a matter of salvation, of going to either heaven or hell. So, it's not something that, when you see this stuff, that, that you should take lightly. So, going further, uh, let's see here. Example, Tim LaHaye said this to Sung Sun Young Moon 20 years before Moon claimed to be the Messiah. Now, Sung Young Moon, the... the, the uh, and I've done a study on him, and I give you the teaching on that, Uh, claims to be the Messiah on planet Earth. And we're going to go over all that information again. It's been a long time since I did that study. And you're not going to believe how many people are yoked up with this guy, this gigantic cult leader. You're not going to believe how many Bible-believing, supposed born-again Christians are yoked up with this devil. Okay? Okay? Tim LaHaye, the author of the Left Behind series, okay, said this to Sung Young Moon 20 years before Moon claimed to be the Messiah. Before Sung Young Moon gave Jerry Falwell $3.5 million for his Regent University, or Liberty, I'm sorry, Liberty. And we're going to get to that too. Before Jerry Falwell hired an exposed liar, Ergen 
Kaner, we're going to talk about him more, before Chuck Missler placed LaHaye on his board of regents. And again, all these are little issues that we will get to in totality later in the study. Tim LaHaye said of Moon, quote, Your suffering will cleanse the sins of America. End of quote. When he was in prison for a time here. And again, we're going to get to that very soon. And, and this is all referenced, the, the stuff that we're talking about here. Um, there's a teaching that I did on this previously that I just mentioned. And it's entitled Reverend Falwell, Reverend Sung Young Moon, and the Love of Money. And this is from 2007, May of 2000, May 20th, 2007. So it's been quite a while. Now, there's a link here. You can click on that. The audio quality on my earlier teachings aren't what it is today. I was still trying to figure out more of the sound things. And, and I went through a lot of sound configurations. Not to say it's perfect um, today, but it was. it's a lot better than it was. But anyway, I'm just going to give you the actual description of this teaching. In this teaching, we will be looking at the fruit of some of the most prominent Christian figures in America. This list will include Jerry Falwell Sr. Uh, and Jr., uh, Timothy LaHaye of the Left Behind series, Gary Bauer, Bill Bright, Paul Crouch, Dr. James Dobson, Billy Graham, Dr. D. James Kennedy, Beverly LaHaye, Ralph Reed, Pat Robertson, James Robison, Phyllis Schlafly, George Bush Sr. and Jr., and Dr. Robert Schuller. Jesus said, by their fruit ye shall know them, which is in reference to the fruit of a true Christian as opposed to a pseudo-Christian tare, like the tares, the wheat and the tares in the Bible. We will be looking at the undeniable documented financial links of the people listed above to the cult leader, Reverend Sung Young Moon, of the Unification Church in Korea. Unbelievably, good old Reverend Moon was actually crowned Messiah and Savior of the Earth. I'm not making this up. He was crowned Messiah and Savior of the Earth on March 23rd, 2004 at the Dirksen Senate Office Building in Washington, D.C. Now, if you don't believe that, click on the study and you, and you can click on the PDF. And I also give you the pictures here in the study. Now, on the older studies, you'll notice if you click on the PDF, it's like a div share link. It'll take you to another page and it almost looks blank. There's not a lot. You have to scroll down a little bit and you'll see a green download button. Click the download button and it'll walk you through that. It's it's a little different um, on my older studies. But this this devil was literally crowned Messiah and Savior on, on, uh, on planet Earth, March 23rd, 2004, at the Dirksen Senate office in Washington, D.C., where scores of, quote, Christian leaders as well as several U.S. Senators and Representatives met for this very blasphemous occasion. Southern Baptist leaders were on hand as well, uh, as were Trinity Broadcasting Network uh, President Paul Crouch. We're going to talk a lot about good old Paul. Reverend Jerry Falwell. Reverend Robert Schuller. And again, I've done a whole teaching on the title of Reverend, which is totally unbiblical for a human to take. It's only used one time in the Bible where it's in description of God, and it says holy and reverend is he. If you want to hear that teaching, just key in reverend in the search box at contendingfortruth.com, and you'll find it. It's only like 20 minutes long, I think. Uh, Also in attendance were uh, Kenneth Copeland, Pat Boone, and many others. Moon claims... This devil claims Jesus failed on his mission to earth, but Moon has not failed. This is one of the largest smoking guns and flagrant moves ever made and condoned by mainstream Christian figures and politicians. This information is based on highly referenced factual evidence. We even give you the pictures, even in this study, of the actual um, proclamation from that night. From the, from this Dirksen Senate, I mean, we we show you the pictures of the guy getting crowned. I mean, they're putting this crown on this devil. Hey, he's wearing. I mean, it's just it's incomprehensible. But this isn't something I've talked about a lot in you know. This has been like five years almost since I did this study. But it heavily relates to this teaching we're doing today. And and when you start to get a grasp. I like this study because you really get a grasp of the totality of the the sheer vastness 
uh, of this apostasy, uh, of the of the infiltration of the so-called Christian corporate church in America. It is mind blowing this information. So we're looking at a picture here. And it says, this picture to the left is from the Strategic Perspectives 2 conference when apostate Chuck Missler asked the apostate Tim LaHaye to be on the, quote, scholarly Koinea Institute Board of Regents in 2007. Now, I did a whole teaching on Chuck Missler. This is just confirming more of that, okay? I give you the links to the teachings here, or you can just key in Chuck or Missler in the keyword search box at contendingfortruth.com. So, if you're like a big Chuck Missler fan and you're already offended, well, I'm really sorry, but the amount of evidence against the guy is so overwhelming, and it's just building every day. Just like Tom Horn, what he's doing. And Chuck Missler and Tom Horn are totally yoked up right now. I mean, the next the next um, thing they're doing in like Lakeland, Florida, they're, they're on the speaking schedule together. I am seeing such a gigantic push for these apostate ministries to yoke up and then point everybody to Rome, to the Vatican, to the Pope. I mean, it is so getting so flagrant and so out of control. My job is becoming increasingly easier by the week regarding documenting this stuff. Because it's, it's so flagrant, it's so in your face, it's so undeniable that unless you were just totally blind or refused to look at the facts, there's no way you can deny it. It's not opinion. It's not a matter of, oh, well, you think that went. No, no. It's a matter of documentation. Which is why I put out, like in this case, and again, I can't take credit for this PDF. I, I did I make a lot of additions and stuff, but we try to put out a gigantic PDF every week that backs up what we're saying. So it's not just like my opinion and I give you no validation and there's no other way you can check these things out. So, Going further, it says, how can a man who continues to remind his audiences of his impressive credentials and alleged biblical knowledge get wrapped up with the blatantly apostate, meaning Chuck Missler? Why is Chuck Missler getting it so wrong over and over with such alleged discernment and wisdom? It's not scholarship, but obedience to the word of God that brings the Holy Spirit. Acts 5.32 says, the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him, uh, so the Holy Ghost is given to those that obey him, okay? So again, when you see a lot of these people in there, they're doing things totally contrary to the Bible, and they're pointing people to the Vatican and the Pope and Rome and, and doing a lot of flagrant stuff, you have to question, obviously, if that person is saved and has the Holy Ghost living inside them as a born-again Christian. I mean, it's just just logical to do that, Um 2 Timothy 3.7 says, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Which is a huge trend I'm seeing. All the books that they've got out there. And, you know, the Christian bookstores. And, you know, more books, more books, more books. And, and more videos and more videos. And I'm not saying there's not good books and videos. But the primary thing we really need to be in is the Word of God. The King James Bible in the English speaking language. That's the primary thing I try to point people to. Not me. Don't follow me. Man can fail you. Hopefully I can help steer you in the right direction. But I don't see the fruit of all these books and all these recordings and all these DVDs. I don't see good fruit overall coming from all of these extra biblical things. And I'm, and again, I'm not condemning all books and all, all the other extra things like that. It's just that, you know... Obviously, there's a lot of money to be made, and the love of money is the root of all evil. So, there's another factor there. Now, what we're looking at here is a picture of uh, Sung Young Moon's Unification Church President, Bo Hai Pak, and the Pope. So, the president of Sung Young Moon's Unification Church, Bo Hai Pak, I don't think he is anymore, but we're, we are seeing a picture here where he's with the Pope. It's Pope John Paul II, and, and him and his wife are shaking the Pope's hand. Okay, and then we're also looking at the cover of his book, Bohai Pak, and it says, My Testimony to Reverend Sung Young Moon, Volume 2, and it says Messiah. That's the name of the book. To Bohai Pak, his Messiah is 
Sung, Sung Mung Moon, okay? So that's his Messiah, and he has proclaimed himself to be Lord and Savior, Messiah of planet Earth. The following is an excerpt on Tim LaHaye from Bohai Pak, who was president of the Unified Unification Church, or the Moonies. You ever heard of the Moonies? Well, this is them. From 1977 to 1991. So this is an excerpt from Tim LaHaye regarding Bohai Pak. And it says, one day, Reverend Dr. Tim LaHaye came to visit. Um, okay, it's, this is written by Bohai Pak about Tim LaHaye. Okay, and he says, he was a minister, Tim LaHaye, who had previously suggested that, quote, we all spend one week in prison with Reverend Moon. Now, evidently, Reverend Moon had got thrown in prison. I, I, again, the reasons for all that, um, you, could, you could do a keyword search and find out. But he was in prison, I believe in America here, for various reasons. Okay? The moment he took Reverend Moon's hands, now, I guess Tim LaHaye went to visit this Reverend Moon in prison. The moment he took Reverend Moon's hands, Dr. LaHaye was overcome with tears and couldn't even speak. When he finally could speak, he said, quote, Reverend Moon, please forgive the American government. America has committed a great sin against you. I really want to apologize to you on behalf of the government and the American people. Please forgive America. Not all American people are like that. And then he wept again. Now this is Tim LaHaye, the author of the Left Behind series, the guy that started the Council for National Policy, as we're going to see. One of the most influential, quote, Christian, I would call him pseudo-Christian leaders in America. And he's taking the hands of this devil, demon-possessed cult leader that says he is Lord and Savior and Messiah of planet Earth and was crowned that at the Dirksen Senate building, performs what they call mass weddings where like a thousand couples get married to people that whoever he says they get married, they get married. They're not even like engaged. They, I, I guess he just he pairs them up. And they get married in mass in his church. He is a cult leader. Big time. And this is what Tim LaHaye had to say about this guy. The moment he took his hands. That's why the Bible says, I believe, the, one of the reasons why the Bible says, lay hands suddenly on no man. Like the Pentecostals do, they go around, I've been, you know, been there, done that, you know, where they go around and they just lay hands on people arbitrarily. Things can be imparted. I mean, it's one thing to shake somebody's hand, but it's another thing to actually really go there and, 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 to, and like a, be opened for a spiritual exchange. And I think this is what he was in reference to here. The moment he took his hands, he was overcome with tears and couldn't even speak. Well, was that from God? How could it possibly be from God? The guy's a demon-possessed cult leader. No, it was demonic. This is why your feelings can fail you. This is why the Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? He was following his heart. If he would have been following the word of God, he would have never been in prison to go and to apologize to this guy. He would have never put himself in that position. But he was open for deception. Not to say he wasn't already deceived. Not to say he wasn't already a Luciferic plant. Which he probably was. Maybe this is made up. Maybe this supposed thing is made up. But probably not. He probably had this genuine experience. But he was already. He already had the demonic doors open. Like a barn door. This just sealed the deal. When he um, took Reverend Moon's hands. Gotta be careful. There is demonic exchanges that can happen when you lay hands on people. And particularly if you're open to that. Like, you know, if you're, old, okay, I'm open to whatever. Got to be real careful. Uh, there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. See, the thing is, is if he would have been examining this guy's fruits, let's say he was really a Christian and he was really had examined this guy's fruits, he would have never shown up. He might have shown up there to rebuke the guy and say, you know, you're a cult leader and you really need to uh, stop what you're doing and thank God you're in prison because this is kind of where you need to be probably. <laughs> I mean, better you're here than going out and deceiving other people. No, no, no. 
That's not what happened at all. It was the exact opposite. So, Reverend Moon embraced him and then said, There is nothing to forgive, for me to forgive. Since I have been here, I have come to love America even more. I am only thankful, and coming here, I have made up my mind to give my entire life for the sake of America. Oh, thank you, Mr. Cult Leader. This is what we really need. You giving up your life, right. And then it, he goes on to say, um, I've come to realize even more just how precious America is. Now, this is like coming from Satan himself. Or Satan's mouthpiece, one of them. Then it goes on to say, Dr. LaHaye was visibly moved. Reverend Moon, he said, you are truly living the love of Jesus Christ. Of course, Reverend Moon said Jesus Christ failed on his mission to earth, and, but he didn't fail. Do you realize this guy has elevated himself? He is so self-deluded that he has elevated himself to a position above Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the creator of the universe, the King of kings and Lord of lords, the Alpha, the Omega, the first and the last. This devil has had the audacity to elevate himself above Jesus Christ in his own mind. And this devil, Tim LaHaye, is just feeding into his delusion. He says, you are truly living the love of Jesus Christ. Your suffering will cleanse the sins of America. How blasphemous can you be? The blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth us from all sins. That's what the Bible says. Okay, Not the suffering of some cult leader who's in prison. His suffering isn't going to cleanse nothing. And then he goes on to say, I am grateful to God for sending you here to the United States. You should say, I'm, I'm grateful to Lucifer or Satan. That would have been a much more accurate statement. So, straight from the horse's mouth, there's a big link here to confirm this was uh, about this. And we're going to give you a whole lot more proof as well. This is a screenshot from Christianity Today. And uh, we're looking at, and it's entitled, Christianity Today Classic. With their leader in prison, the Moonies pursue legitimacy. Okay? The Moonies are also part of Sung Young Moon's, uh, that's, that's how they're no, known as. They're known as the Moonies. It's kind of a derogatory term that you heard a lot more in times past. But, I mean, you know, in times past... The Moonies, I can remember growing up, even uns in an unsafe family, thinking, man, they're they're like whacked out kind of. They're like, woof, stay away from these guys, you know. Uh, but this is from Christianity Today. Uh, with their leader in prison, Moonies pursue legitimacy. Tim LaHaye, and this is the subtitle, Tim LaHaye and other Christians are helping the Unification Church battle the perceived threat of government intrusion. Now, I'm... I'm not wanting government intrusion as far as the freedom of religion, okay? I'm not for that, okay? But I know one thing. We don't, I'm not going to get yoked up with the Mormon church or with the Jehovah Witnesses or with some other cult so that that cult can expand itself. I, I'm just not going to do that. The Bible says, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Okay, so I'm not going to help them in their efforts. And I don't want their help on my end either. This is the big thing. This is the big push we're seeing now, where we're seeing a gigantic push from so many different ministries to yoke up with Rome in particular. And again, the Bible says that through the Antichrist and the false prophet, we're going to have a one world religion. Well, from a Christianity standpoint, we have to have all of these supposed, or I guess they would be referred to as Protestant denominations, ultimately coming back to the mother whore, Rome, because they were protesting in the beginning with Martin Luther, and they came out of the Catholic Church, most of these, except the, the Baptists didn't, but that's a whole other subject. A really good book on that is um, The Faithful Baptist Witness by Dr. Phil Stringer. And it explains the whole line of Christians that came up separately from the Catholic Church. The Waldensians and, and, and these types of people. It's a separate line. Okay, the Protestants actually came out of the Catholic Church. Most of the nom denominations we have today, the mainstream ones, are considered Protestant, and they're going to ultimately go back into the Catholic Church. The mother whore. 
that they 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 came out of originally. It's going to go back to that. So, um, unfortunately, that's going to be one of the main ways that the one world religion is brought about, and then that is going to be amalgamated with the other religions under Antichrist and false prophet. How that's going to how that is going to happen specifically in totality, I, I can't say for sure, but. I would have to say the Catholic Church is going to have a main, main, uh, is going to probably form the backbone of that. From an infrastructure standpoint, they're really set up to do that more than anyone else. So, anyway, you can, you can read the, the very first part of the screenshot of, of this particular article. And this, this is from, um, uh, let's see, August 1st, 2001, this article that I'm, that I'm reading from there, um, and it was talking about all the way back then, Tim LaHaye yoking up with them. And they're trying to help, you know, Sung Young Moon to, uh, to do whatever he was trying to do at the time. Now, the Word of God states, and again, we read part of this verse before, Romans 16, 17, and 18. Now, I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division and offenses, contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. Now that means their own like carnal desires. Um, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Now the Greek word for mark, where it says mark them, is skopio, and it means to fix one's eyes upon or direct one's attention to. Okay, so when you mark them, you fix your eyes on them, you direct your attention to them. If you had a wolf that was stalking the sheep, okay, you would fix your eyes on the wolf, wouldn't you? Or would you just, no, oh, no, let the wolf take a whole bunch of sheep. Yeah, who needed them anyway? You know, he's hungry. No, you're not going to do that. You're going to fix your eyes. You're going to direct your attention upon the wolf. And the Bible talks about, the, you know, wolves in sheep's clothing with these ministers of unrighteousness. And if there was ever a wolf in sheep's clothing, it's this Sung Young Moon. And I mean, then the people that are following him also be, be pretty much become that as well. The Greek word for the word simple is akakos, and it means here in scripture, fearing no evil from others. It meaning also distrusting no one. So when it says, by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple... That means, that in, in that regard, the simple means they, they fear no evil from others. They, they distrust no one. Now, Jesus Christ said regarding the end times, over and over again, you go to Matthew 24 and elsewhere, to be not deceived. Okay? Why? Because if it were possible, they, the Antichrists, there, there's, there's one Antichrist, capital A, but there's many Antichrists, meaning they're against Christ. Okay? And the false prophets and these types of people... If it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. The very, the very elect of God they shall deceive. But see, when you go around as a Christian, and you're simple in this particular thing, it's meaning you fear no evil from others, you distrust no one. It's like you just... And this is the way that most people operate in the modern day church. They're, they're not... They're not being vigilant. They're not being sober. They're not marking them which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrines you have learned. They're not, they're not realizing or they're, or they're totally blind to the fact that there's many wolves in sheep's clothing. That if Satan can be transformed as a minister of righteousness, it's no marvel that his ministers can appear as ministers of righteousness. The Bible says this, that these people generally are hirelings that have no true love for the sheep. Hirelings, what does that mean? They do it for the hire, the money. But the true shepherd will lay down his life for the sheep, Jesus Christ. So this is something that if there was ever a time in all of humanity, we should be um, not simple, okay? Uh, in this regard, meaning fearing no evil from others and distrusting no one. If there was ever a time not to do that, it's now. I mean, this is the time of the strong delusion that God said he was going to send in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they will believe a lie, that they might all be damned who received not the love of the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So you, you want to have a love for the truth, no matter how hard that truth may be. 
You're following somebody like Tim LaHaye, Sung Young Moon, and a lot of these other guys. I'm not saying you don't have a love for the truth. Maybe you're just truly deceived. But you are deceived to a certain extent. Now, I'm not saying that everything they say or everything they put out is bad. Obviously, if that was the point, then nobody would even be following. These guys are really good at what they do. They're very subtle. Well, so was Satan. He was the most subtle beast of the field if you go back to Genesis 3. Satan generally deceives people through subtlety. He doesn't come out with, you know, two horns, a pointed tail, and a pitchfork. He doesn't operate that way. He comes out, guy, nice, polished suit, really well um, spoken, well mannered. Uh, let's say he's got all these credentials, he's got all these letters behind his name and stuff like that. And it, and if he's in your church or if he's coming to you, a lot of times you just let your defenses down because you think, oh, well, no, no he couldn't possibly be, be deceiving me or whatever. Well, those are the very ones that Satan would want to use the most. So let's go further. This goes on to say, gullible is a better way of putting it regarding the simple. And the apostate church in America is the most gullible in the entire world. I, you know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I, I, I watched that documentary on, on Africa last week about those Nigerian pastors, and they're pretty gullible too. So I don't think we have a lock on anything, but um, we're, we're pretty... We're pretty bad. Committing, um, committing the abomination, according to Luke 16, 15, by lifting up their, quote, teachers, believing whatever they're told, without examining the fruit of these teachers. So, by their fruits you shall know them. So, 1 Timothy 6, 3 and 5 says, If any man teach otherwise, and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. And then it goes on to say, perverse disputings of, of men of corrupt minds, which really, when you think of a guy like Sun Young Moon, you think of perverse disputings, men of corrupt minds. I mean, how could anybody in their right mind come and say, I am the, the, the Messiah and Savior of planet Earth? I mean, his, the guy that was president of his church wrote a book to him, and it was entitled Messiah. They crown the guy Messiah and Savior of the planet at the Dirksen Senate building. And there were all these Christian leaders of televangelism right there. If that's not a perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds, I don't really know what is. When you follow someone like that, you're being partakers of their unrighteousness. And when you yoke yourself up, when you get in agreement with these types of people, you are going to be so vulnerable to demonic deception yourself, and you're not going to see it, because you can't see the demons. It's not, not like you can really see it happening, okay? It'd be kind of cool, in a way, if we could actually see when the demons were actually trying to attack us. But they have that advantage where we can't see that, because they're they're literally, it's like they're in another dimension. We can't see into that dimension. But this is what's happening. And they get totally demonically deluded. Unless God liberates them from that and opens their eyes. But if they stay in that, eventually it's almost like the Bible says in 1 Timothy 4.1, The Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, and having their conscience seared with a hot iron. You get to the point where if, if you just stay in these doctrines of devils long enough, and, and you stay yoked up with these ministries long enough, that your conscience will become seared, a, seared as a hot iron. And, and like things that should be bothering you as a Christian, they don't bother you anymore. That's, that's not the place you want to be. It's definitely not the place you want to be. So, this is something to think about. Oh, and the other verse I was going to go over is a verse I quoted last week, where, where it talks about in the Bible, it says, while they, meaning these false teachers, promise them liberty, promise their, their followers liberty, they themselves are the servants of bondage. For of whom a man is overcome, the same he is brought into bondage, or servants of corruption. So, when you let a man or a woman overcome you, 
with, let's say, some cultic bad doctrine, you will be brought into bondage. Now, is that like you're sitting there with handcuffs on, literally? No. It's a spiritual bondage. You don't see it happening. You don't, you don't know you're in bondage. You're blind to it. And again, you got to be... This is why you really want to always be prayed for the fear of God and, and, and for wisdom and understanding and truth. Because you do not want to be caught up in this spiritual bondage. Now, that's more the norm now, though. It's more the norm for most Christians because they don't have a clue about a lot of the stuff that, for instance, we get into in, in this particular ministry on a weekly basis. There's just so many snares and traps of Satan out there. That, that you can fall into in today's day and age. So, let's go further here. Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of truth. They don't have truth. They're destitute of it. Supposing that gain is godliness. Now, where have we heard that before? In the modern day televangelism ministries. They suppose gain is godliness. Particularly, you know, TBN and... and and, you know, a lot of the charismatic stuff that goes on, and not, not, not to say they've got a, la- a lock on it, but, I mean, so many of these, these ministries, it's like, you know, look at me, I, I'm driving a Bentley, I'm flying in a jet, I've got this, and it's because, you know, gain is godliness. Oh, he could have only got all those things because, because he's so godly. And they're here, the Bible says the Son of Man have nowhere to even lay his head, Jesus Christ. You know, and, and the apostles and these types of people, that they, they went around in, you know, um, I believe even Peter and talked about Acts, silver and gold have I none, where, where they were talking about, but such as I have I give you. And he laid hands on them, healed them. Well, um, that is not very popular in today's day and age. But again, supposing gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. So, I don't think those are ministries you need to be watching on TV, or ministries you sure don't want to be going to a church that's teaching that particular doctrine. I'm not saying God can't bless you, okay? Um, The whole principle of reaping and sowing, I totally believe in that. But when your motivation for the giving is covetousness, or greed, or, or... or you think that I'm going to get a hundredfold increase if I do this. You know, and I mean, they, they've got these elaborate scams that they use in these churches and on televangelism. And you have to understand, this is well thought out, well planned out stuff. We're going to get into that more as this teaching progresses. We're going to look at some of the actual ways they scam money out of people. Uh, it's, it's very sobering. So let's go further. 1 Corinthians 5, 11-13. But now I have written uh, unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother, meaning, okay, and it would apply to any woman as well, a brother, meaning a brother in Christ or a sister in Christ. Okay, so I've written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, okay, sex outside of marriage, or covetous, meaning they're they're covetous, They're, they're, they're all about gimme, gimme, gimme. Okay, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such and one not to eat. Now, this these verses don't even apply in today's modern day church. They don't apply, hardly at all. I've been, in the churches I've been in, I've seen very few practice any kind of church discipline. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 5 is all about church discipline. And the first part of it talks about, you know, a person in the church that had taken his his dad's wife, I think it was a stepmom, to be his wife. And the church was glorying in its shame. And the solution there was to turn such an one, Paul said, to turn such an one over to Satan. When you're gathered together, turn such an one over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the soul may be saved in the day of the Lord. Okay, now I've done a whole teaching on that, entitled Turning Such a One Over to Satan. Just go to contendingfortruth.com and uh, key in, I don't know, Satan or turning or whatever, um, and you'll find it. That's never, I've never been in a church that practiced that, ever. 
But what if the churches started doing that? Well, a lot of times, and I hate to say this, most of the time, the place they'd have to start is at the very head. Because most of the time, if you look at the biblical qualifications for a pastor, most pastors that are in the pulpit right now in America are disqualified. If you look at the biblical qualifications for a pastor, or deacon, elder, bishop, whatever, you know, they're, they're going to be disqualified. Because there's a lot of qualifications. Well, when you ignore so many things in Scripture, it's no wonder the church is in the shape it's in. You know, you wouldn't even know where to start in the average church. I mean, as far as cleansing, purging, whatever, from a biblical standpoint. So let's go further here. Uh, For what, okay, verse 12, for what have I to do to judge them also that are without, meaning those that are apart or without, they're outside the body of Christ. But then it goes on to say, do not ye judge them that are within? See, we're supposed to judge those that are within the body of Christ. And this doesn't mean hypocritical judgment. Oh, look at him. I'm so much better. That's not what it's about. It's about judging the fruit. If they see that a person is um, a fornicator, covetous, idolater, you know, Adulterer, that would also be in there. Railer, drunkard, okay. You see, you see, like, let's say your pastor, or whatever, or deacon, is doing this. You know, you, that has to be dealt with from a biblical standpoint. It should be. Rarely do you ever even hear about that anymore. Um, and it goes on to say, do not you judge them that are within? It's like a matter-of-fact statement with a question mark. Like, of course you do. Of course you do. But it doesn't happen. And, again... Big reason why the church is in the way, the shape it's in. Because that's not done. Going to the next verse. But them that are without, God judgeth. Meaning the unsaved. Okay. Therefore, put away from among yourselves that wicked person. That's what it says to do. But how often is that ever done? Well, when you disobey scripture in a church setting, it's no wonder that the church gets totally beyond messed up, and then not only that, they're corporations, 501c3 corporations that were literally created by the government through IRS guidelines, which they're supposed to abide by because they're the ones that entered into a contract with the government slash IRS, and they and they established the pastor as the actual CEO of the corporation and the deacons of, as the board of, uh, the board of directors. I mean, that's how, if you don't establish your church in that regard, they'll do it for you. That's, that's how it goes. And then they got to go to the state to get their license to preach. I don't see any of this stuff in the Bible. I don't see where the Bible says, make sure that you, you uh, the state creates the corporation of, of your ministry. <laughs> There's no Bible for any of that. So that by itself is a whole other can of worms. I've gotten into many, many times. Just key in 501c3. In the search box at ContendingForTruth.com. Um, it's a mess. It's beyond a mess. No doubt. But the Bible predicts it was going to be this way. In, in the end times. The, the great falling away of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Well, this is all evidence and part of that. So I don't let it get, you know, I don't say get discouraged by it. Because the Bible predicted it. It's just more confirmation that the word of God is true. So, going further, it says, The Lord's instruction for keeping the bride of Christ pure on earth is, and separating from the tares. Uh, Romans 16, 18. Well, avoid them. Uh, 1 Timothy 6, 5. From such an one withdraw thyself. Okay? These are things that the Bible says to do to keep yourself pure. Okay? 1 Corinthians 5, 11, Not to keep company if any man that is called a brother with, one, with such an one not even to eat. Okay. The purification by the Lord and his bride, uh, if we look at Titus 2.14, which says, quote, and this is in reference to Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar, peculiar people zealous of good works. Uh, 1 John 3, 2 through 3 says, Beloved, now we are the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. 
But we know that when he, meaning Jesus Christ, shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. This goes on to say, like Chuck Missler, the apostate church talks about truth, but they don't love the truth by obeying. So they don't obey, like just the verses we went over. They're not obeying those verses at all. They're totally ignored. And you can't ignore huge swaths of scripture and expect the church to not be corrupted. It doesn't work that way. Ephesians 5, 9. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. So, truth is a part of the fruit of the Spirit. And if you don't have love for the truth, but have pleasure and unrighteousness, that's a very, very, very bad place to be, according to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Because God's the one that's sending the strong delusion that they will believe a lie, that they might all be damned, that means go to hell forever, who received not the love of the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Matthew 7.18 A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Now what we're going to be looking at today is a lot of evil fruit. A ton of evil fruit. And you could say, yeah, but they've, they've done good too. Some of these, these ministers, they've done, they've done some good. Alright, well, again, Satan comes through subtlety. Okay, these people aren't, again, they're not going to just come out and, and, and they're not, a lot of times, some of these people started out in ministry Maybe with maybe with good intentions, maybe they weren't Luciferian plants, I'll give them that much. But they've been corrupted over time because they haven't heeded to these tenets that we're going over. And if they become corrupted, then if you follow them, you become corrupted. Of whom a man is overcome, the same he is brought into bondage. See, they overcome you. You go and sit in a church like this, and you could go in there, and, and you might have went in there with the best intentions, and maybe you were right with God in the whole nine yards. But if you continue to sit under that corrupt leadership, you're going to become you're going to be brought into bondage, and you're not going to see it happening because it's spiritual, and you can't see the demons. It's like a frog that that analogy of the frog boiling in the water. It's like lukewarm. And then if you want to boil the frog and kill him, you turn up the heat real slow, and by the time the water's boiling, the frog. But if you, if, you, if you throw the frog in boiling water, he'll jump out right away. So, that's how a lot of these churches operate. It's, they're very subtle. You don't even know what's going on. So, going further, <clears throat> since men, lifting up men, is an abomination to the Lord, this sin, among others, is spiritually blinding them. So, they lift up men, which is sin, and they don't obey the word of God, meaning they're glorifying a man instead of Jesus Christ. They don't obey the word of God. Their knowledge is puffing them up, because knowledge can do that. See, that's why you pray for fear of God and humility, because that will counterbalance knowledge puffing you up. Okay, that's the, that's the remedy for, for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding puffing you up. Okay, fear of God and humility, that will remedy that. So that's just a little tip for you. Um, and their knowledge is puff, puffing them up, which is causing further blindness. Uh, and evidence of that is Ob- Obadiah one three, Jeremiah seventeen five. Thus saith the Lord: Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. And then Jeremiah seventeen seven says, though conversely, blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope is in, in whose hope the Lord is. So we don't want to be putting our trust in man because you, you will literally bring a curse on yourself. You don't want to make flesh your arm because the, by, the ultimate byproduct of that is your heart departing from the Lord according to the word of God here. So, these people that do this cannot see the evil fruit in these men that are being exalted. They, they're, they're, they're blind to it. Uh... And this is the great verse on that, Luke 16, 15. 
For what is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. You know, this whole thing about Whitney Houston this weekend or whatever. Highly esteemed among men. Oh, everybody's praising her. And I saw Dionne Warwick up there, so she's went to, you know, be home. She's went to a better place. Um, well, that's highly doubtful unless she got saved in the, in the waning hours of her life. But that's kind of highly unlikely considering she was a drug addict. You know, I, I mean, I can't judge her heart. I'm, I'm not saying that, but it's, it's, let's face it, it's kind of highly unlikely, 99.99% chance, most likely not. I mean, in order to get to that position, you've got to sell out to Satan. She probably had a literal deal with the devil. From, from my research, people that, that go anywhere, particularly in whether it's pop music, rock music, whatever, rap, they make some type of deal with the devil to get to where they're at. And here, Dionne Warwick of all people. Dionne Warwick, the same one that brought us the song Deja Vu. Could this be the dream that I once knew? The, the New Age witch, Dionne Warwick, the one that had the Dionne Warwick Psychic Friends Network that went bankrupt because they were scamming all these people and giving them the wrong advice because they were basically consulting with demons in order, and, and ultimately those, those um, psychic hotlines all have to go bankrupt because they get sued so much. Dionne Warwick, of all people, given her eulogy. And here she is, and there's a banner in front of her, and it's a Knights Templar cross. It's, it's, it's the symbol of the Knights Templar. Okay? Uh, kind of like a offshoot of the high-level Freemasonic ancient order. Totally evil. And they've got that is the banner hanging on the podium she's speaking behind. We're going to talk about that same banner, because Tim LaHaye had it on the cover of one of his books. The same Knights Templar uh, cross. It's, it's a slanted cross going through a crown. Now you can't tell me this is an Illuminati symbolism. They're telling you flat out who they're serving. Right there. Her homecoming was almost... 99.9% .9 her homecoming was in hell. If we got a glimpse of where Whitney Houston is right now, like let's say globally, for just 15 seconds or 30, I guarantee you there would be mass, I would think, I would think, there would be mass repentance on a global, global scale. I would hope to believe that. If you got one glimpse of hell, or where somebody was, I mean, the, the, the kind of, of suffering and the kind of terror that's what we need to see. Or is it better that we get around and we and we we reminisce about what a wonderful person they were and, and what a you know this and that and, and and oh yeah she went to heaven and all this other garbage and all these people buying into this stuff. It's a lie from the pit of hell. And the only thing it serves is Satan. Satan's just sitting back there laughing and his demons and devils and fallen angels, and, and they're all having a good time at our expense, and these dupe people, that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. That's what the Bible says. So, going further, uh, you could say that Chuck Missler's relationship with Tim LaHaye is tied to the Council for National Policy. That's a real cornucopia of darkness uh, when one researches it. Much has been written on this group. Now, at this point, I give you the two links to the teachings I've done on Chuck Missler and the Council for National Policy. Now, I give you some information there on the Council for National Policy. I'm going to give you more information here, separate information, kind of a melding of the two. But the links are here. It's on That's on page like five of the PDF. So before I go further, let's a little refresher on what the Council for National Policy is, because this is really important that we understand this, because this is, forms one of the backbones of modern-day pseudo-501c3 corporate Christianity in America. And as a result, it influences almost every other area of Christianity in this nation. Okay, so, the Council for National Policy, what is it? Uh, many evangelical, Pentecostal, charismatic, Catholic, Mormon, and other ecumenically minded leaders are members of the Council for National Policy. The 500 plus 
member organization, and this varies per year, the membership, this organization plans the strategy of the religious right and conservatives in the United States. Now, uh, John 10, 26-30 says, But ye believe not, because you're not of my sheep. This is Jesus Christ talking. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I will give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. So, this is a, a comforting verse, but at the same time, it's also a rather alarming verse when you think of the fact that he says, Jesus Christ said, My sheep hear my voice and know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Um, but it says, But you believe not because you're not of my sheep. Hmm. The thing is, is that if we're a true, born-again, Bible-believing Christian, at some point in time, I'm not saying we can't be deceived, Okay, but at some point in time, we need to come out from that and we need to start operating in truth. We, we, we need to stop living in a fairy tale world like most modern day people that would call themselves Christians in America are. They're living in a fairy tale. They're not getting the whole truth. They're not even getting part of it a lot of times. 2 Corinthians 6.14, again, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness. Now, that verse is given because this Council for National Policy is evangelical, Pentecostal, charismatic, Catholic, Mormon, and other ecumenically minded leaders. I mean, there's probably not one person in the whole organization that's even saved. As you can see, this, thing's gonna, this thing is mega evil. Mega we're going to play you a little bit of a little clip on this. And you're going to see how cloak and dagger this thing is. And we're not supposed to be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. So that they're just ignoring that. So and for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness, and what concord hath Christ with Belial or the devil, or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? So, I mean, if you were a true born-again Bible-believing Christian and, like, you said, well, I want to be on the Council for National Policy, eh, number one, that's not going to happen because they're only going to invite their selected, most likely, Luciferic initiates into the fold. But wouldn't you think you'd have a problem yoking up with Catholics and Mormons and other just flat-out cults? No, there's no problem with that at all. So, that's not good. Now, Amos 3.3 3 is very interesting regarding this subject, and it says, can two walk together except they be agreed? you got to really be careful who you're yoking up with. Of whom a man has overcome, the same he's brought into bondage. You know, we're not supposed to be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. So, in 1981, but there's, there, again, there's this gigantic push now to yoke up with Rome. Huge. I'm seeing it all around me, every week. And it's getting more flagrant by the day. This is why I've been keen on the Catholic Church so much lately. Because I'm seeing it play into almost all of the modern day apostate Christianity current events. Huge push toward Rome. In 1981, the CNP, or the Council for National Policy, was founded as a 501c3 nonprofit educational organization by Tim LaHaye of the Religious Roundtable who was also the first president of the CNP. Now, I'm just going to refer to it as the CNP from now on, instead of Council, Council for National Policy. Okay, with funding from Nelson Bunker Hunt, who served as the third CNP president from 1983 to 1984. Bunker Hunt was also a board member and leading financier of the John Birch Society, a major supporter also of Campus Crusade for Christ and the founder and the main funder of the Wycliffe Bible Associates, and is, like many founding CNP members, a Knight of the Order of Malta. How many red flags can you get already? 
this Bunker Hunt, was, who was literally the third president, this guy was, I mean, leading financier of John Birch Society. I could do a whole study on them. These are front groups for the Illuminati. Yes, they may represent some, some seemingly very biblical issues on the surface. But it's all it's like the Hegelian dialectic. It's controlled opposition. They're controlling both sides of, of the um, of arguments of issues, and they're trying to get you on one side because if you can get on one side of an issue, then they're still in, in partially in control of you a lot of times. You can't see past it. He was a major supporter of Campus Crusade for Christ, founder and main funder of the Wycliffe Bible Associates. I had somebody email me this week defending the Wycliffe Bible Associates about the thing I said last week about them not removing. Like, I would trust anything that would come from them. Please. And he's also a knight of the Order of Malta. We're going to look at, in depth at what that is. Because, <laughs> I mean, it's unbelievable how far this conspiracy... And it's not a conspiracy theory, it's a conspiracy fact. How far this goes. How evil this is. In 1972, the John Birch Society promoted the book None Dare Call It Treason by John Stormer, which, is, which identified the Council on Foreign Relations. Now remember, this book was promoted by the John Birch Society, None Dare Call It Treason, identified the Council on Foreign Relations as a pro-communist, Rockefeller-funded Trojan horse on American soil. The Council on National Policy was formed ostensibly to be the conservative alternative to the Council on Foreign Relations. And John Stormer is currently a member. Now, again, the Hegelian dialectic. They give you the problem, and then they form two sides. It's like Democrat-Republican. Okay, The Illuminati is in control of both sides. The Council for National, uh, the Council of Foreign Relations, okay, was formed. And this book surfaces. John Birch Society promotes it, and it and it calls out them as an evil organ, an evil organization. So the response is the Illuminati creates the Council for National Policy to be the conservative alternative to the Council on Foreign Relations. They control both sides. They do this in almost all aspects of mainstream life almost. This is why it's so important we, where you know what you're yoking yourself up with. Because you could have the best intentions in the world, but you know, there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof the ways of death. And I think there's a lot of truth in that that saying that says the road to hell is paved with good intentions. It can be. I'm not saying it always is, but it can be. People that think, well I'm a good person, I'm God wouldn't send me to a devil's hell. Well you know, maybe you did all kind of great things or wonderful works, but that's not what gets get you into heaven. So, again, uh, and if you don't know regarding uh, salvation and the Lord Jesus Christ and, and, and being a born-again Christian, go to contendingfortruth.com. There's a tab at the top that says True Salvation. Click on that and listen to those teachings in that order, and um, we'll walk you through it. It's just, you know, we have everything laid out there for you. So, Going further here, I have to see how I'm doing on time here. The early CNP membership directories were obtained by enterprising researchers. However, these revealed that the early leadership of the CNP was, in fact, also represented in the Council on Foreign Relations. The very organization of globalists to which the CNP was to be the conservative alternative. So, here we have the hypocrisy right from the very inception of these organizations. Okay, so, again, just to, if, if you didn't catch that, the early CMP membership directories revealed that the early leadership of CMP was, in fact, also represented in the Council on Foreign Relations. So, in other words, there were people on the Council for Foreign Relations that were also CNP members, which was supposedly the conservative alternative to the Council on Foreign Relations. I mean, this hypocrisy is right off the bat. On the first CNP governing board, there were no less than three, and possibly more, Council on Foreign Relations members. The three they list here are George F. Gilder, Dr. Edward Teller, and Guy Vanderjagt. Now, 
they give you the um, date that they were on the CNP. They give you a link to each name. Uh, that guy Vanderjack, I've heard real bad stuff about him. Uh, real bad. Um, and again, I, I don't have time to go into all that, but I mean, this, it's also corrupt when you start looking at the big picture here. It's also contrived and corrupt. Profiles of other prominent CNP members and members reveal a shocking number of CFR connections, meaning there's all these connections between the Council for National Policy and the Council for Foreign Relations. And supposedly, they're supposedly su- supposed to be diametrically opposed opposites of one another. And yet they're sharing membership. So, even so, these revelations should not be surprising since the CNP was an extension of the John Birch Society, whose early leadership consisted of members either directly or indirectly associated with the Council on Foreign Relations. So, the John Birch Society is a bunch of hypocrites as well. All by design, not by accident. Besides, the CFR and the Religious Roundtable members, the upper echelon of the Council for National Policy, were basically refugees from the defunct, it's called the Western Goals Foundation, there's a link to that. Um, Also, they were um, refugees from the domestic surveillance outfit of the John Birch Society, which included high-ranking members of the fascist World Anti-Communist League, Knights of the Sovereign Military Order of Malta, Knights of Malta, also, and of the Unification Church of Sung Young Moon, and the Freemasons. So you had all these total apostate devils occupying the ranks of the, uh, the CNP, the Council for National Policy, which is supposedly the, the um, organization that's designed to formulate the strategy for the religious right in America. It'd be like Satan, you know holding high counsel and being able to devise the, the uh, formulate the, the um, strategy for the religious right in America. While those involved are from the United States, their organizations and influence over the globe, both religiously and politically. Uh, members include corporate executives, televangelists, legislators, foreign military or high-ranking government officials, leaders of think tanks dedicated to molding society, and those who many view as Christian leadership. Members, in many cases, are owners, owners or leaders of industry such as lumber, oil, mining, commodities, real estate, the media, including radio, owners of radio, television, and print, with all aspects of life covered. Many are involved in education, determining to influence society's direction by direct input with, with children and youth. Many advocate from the same arena of right-wing politics, conservatives, family-friendly, friend, family friendly, reconstructionists, dominionists, and so on. The Senate Foreign Relations Committee from 1995 to 2001 uh, was also a key figure. Oh, no, hold on. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I skipped, a, skipped a sentence there. Um, you know, boy... I'm going to have to stop part one here because I'm just about out of time on this one. So we're going to start part, stop part one here. We're going to pick up in part two right where we left off. So God bless you, and we'll see you in part two. Scott Johnson's weekly audios are available for free 24-7 on the Internet at contendingfortruth.com. That's C-O-N-T-E-N-D-I-N-G-F-O-R-T-R-U-T-H.com. Please help us continue this work. To support this ministry, our mailing address is Scott Johnson, 2nd Line, 450 Conover, C-O-N-O-V-E-R, Boulevard West, number 202, 3rd Line, Conover, North Carolina, 28613. Or on the internet, PayPal can be used at contendingfortruth.com. Thank you, and may the Lord Jesus Christ richly bless you.